The next day, Luke put on his jacket and headed out to meet Colonel Phillips. Like Rogers, he was also spared from having his blood drawn. Dr. Erskine was shot and killed, and all the samples were used up, which shouldn't have been the case in the original plot. In the original plot, there was only one super soldier, but now there was an extra, Luke. This caused the serum sample that was left behind to be used up. Even with a large amount of research data, any attempt to reverse engineer Dr. Erskine's serum formula was going to be a humongous task. The only thing they can expect now was in Luke and Roger's blood. The hope of copying serum was hidden in their genetic code. However, the military's delusion is ultimately a fragile bubble. First of all, Luke wasn't really a super soldier. The energy provided by the serum was used to activate the plug-in and open the gift package, thus it didn't play any role in transforming his body. That's why Luke hardly felt any pain after the injection. What's more, now he has activated the Superman card. Trying to extract something from the blood would undoubtedly be a fool's errand. Even after decades, the military produced a lot of inferior products with great side effects through the so-called reverse engineering. Have you thought about what you're going to do now, Luke? Colonel Phillips looked serious and whispered, it is impossible to copy the serum formula and create a new super soldier in such a short time. That plan will now be aborted. Those politicians will try their best to get rid of their responsibilities. Also, as a super soldier, I'm more optimistic about you. Rogers is a good man. But you're better in all aspects. I can tell, Luke, you're a born warrior. You'll never go soft on the enemy. At this point, Rogers is so far behind, he still has some kind of naive idealism. It won't help to win the war. The essence of war is destruction. It's violence. It's a means to gain benefits. Although we will say this is a war for justice and a battle for freedom, there's no good or evil in war. Rogers doesn't understand this truth, yet, I hope you do. Luke was greatly surprised when he heard these words, he didn't expect the colonel to see it quite clearly. What are you saying colonel, however, Luke wanted to know colonel's thoughts, so he acted ignorant. The politicians on the committee can't be trusted. They're just a bunch of fucking assholes. That Hydra assassin got in thanks to Senator Brandt, and now he's trying to dump the blame on us. Colonel Phillips couldn't help but swear at the incident at the secret base. However, his mind eased a bit when he saw Luke's reassuring expression. For young talents, who were motivated and capable, the older generation would always have the idea of nurturing and lifting them up, provided that they could demonstrate the values that matched them. In the eyes of Colonel Phillips, Luke was such a young talent, who deserved to be nurtured. That's why he said so many heartfelt words. Politicians are only interested in profit, they can be bought and they may even betray their country for profits. The super soldier program is now almost a failure, and their next problem is how to use you and Rogers to their advantage. Colonel Phillips, who had been in the army for over 20 years, knew the political world well. The president wanted an army, but now he only got two super soldiers. On the battlefield, an individual's ability will be infinitely reduced. Even if you can punch through steel plates and catch up with speeding cars, you can't stop the bombardment of shells, and you can't fly to Berlin and kidnap Hitler from his bedroom. Luke listened quietly, his eyes slightly flickered. If they gave me time, I could really do this on my own. Less than 20 hours after loading the card, the enhancement brought by the sun had already exceeded the sum of so many years of his persistent training. Luke could feel that the trillions of cells in his body were hungry as they absorbed the rays of the sun. With so much research funding, only two strong soldiers were produced. To tell you the truth, the military is very disappointed and no longer interested in you. Unsurprisingly, your next fate would probably be staying in the lab and have your blood drawn, like guinea pigs. Colonel Phillips paused, he changed his tone, but I don't think so. Seeing your performance just now and your outstanding achievements in Camp Lehigh, Luke, I've decided to give you an even more important task. Do you know the Howling Commandos? It's a special operations team made up of the best soldiers under the Strategic Science Reserves banner? I want you to lead this team and become their commander. Luke's expression of surprise was a genuine emotional reaction. He did not expect that Colonel Phillips' arrangement for him would be this. Leading the Howling Commandos? Commander? I wonder if I will meet Logan? Luke's mind wandered. He remembered a comic in which Wolverine was also a member of this team and fought side by side with Captain America. Maybe, a certain black hard-boiled egg would be there too. Maybe he will also get to meet a certain cool black guy. After all, Nick Fury had joined the Howling Commandos in his early years. 
What about Rogers? Luke asked curiously. As the saying goes, the bigger the pectoral muscles, the greater the responsibility. He wondered if Rogers would debut as the American Idol this time. Rogers? Senator Brandt is interested in him and intends to make him a war bonds ambassador. Colonel Phillips shrugged his shoulders and said he was helpless. He wanted to recruit both super soldiers into the Howling Commandos, to complete a plan from the Strategic Science Reserve. But Senator Brandt won't relent, he took a fancy to the super soldier as a gimmick. He wanted to make, either Luke or Rogers, a household name and a star attraction. In this way, he could promote the war bonds, add some points under his political achievements, and also create a platform for his future campaign. Simply the best of both worlds, is that so? Luke secretly thought he was lucky. Without Rogers blocking the bullet, the task of performing on stage in costume and being a salesman would have been on him. Even if he could use other means when the time comes, then re enter the military's sights, he would miss a lot of opportunities. Just then, side quest Howling Commando, the war hero's first step. Requirements Join the team and get the approval of three or more team members. Reward Scarecrow's Fear Poison Gas times 10. The task list is now open. Luke took the time to sweep his eyes over the character panel, and a side quest suddenly appeared on it. Well, this is strange. I am in the Marvel world but rewards are from the studio next door. Seeing the gaze from Colonel Phillips, Luke collected his thoughts and quietly said, I am willing to lead Howling Commandos. The former was satisfied with this answer. Don't let me down, Luke. The colonel patted Luke on the shoulder happily, turned, and walked out of the infirmary. I received a phone call from President Roosevelt this morning. From now on, the Strategic Science Reserve has a new mission. We are going to fight Hydra to the death. We're going to kill this horrible beast that lurks in the depths of the shadows of this war. The next morning, Colonel Phillips delivered an impassioned speech. Various researchers, as well as agents and spies, began to pack up and prepare to move out. They are about to leave New York, follow the instructions of their superiors, and rush to the front lines in London. The Super Soldier Project had failed, and the status of the Strategic Science Reserve, which had been carrying great expectations, instantly dropped. Rogers, standing in the lobby of the base, looked like an outsider. He didn't know what to do, and no one told him what to do. Miss Carter, Howard Stark, they all had their own tasks. Everyone's leaving, except me, Colonel. If you're going to fight Hydra, I want to join too. Rogers plucked up his courage and walked up to Colonel Phillips. Rogers had a deep hatred for Dr. Erskine's murderer. You are now a military property and I have no authority over your whereabouts. Colonel Phillips shook his head, with two super soldiers, he could only choose one. The rest belonged to Senator Brandt. Phillips hated making this kind of deal, but he had no other choice. Dr. Erskine was shot and the super soldier project failed. This series of accidents are made by the military's investment in research funding, all thrown into the water with no returns from this investment. As the executive of the Strategic Science Reserve, Phillips had to shoulder the majority of the pressure and blame. Even though many of the problems were due to Senator Brandt because the Hydra assassin appeared among his entourage. But this powerful senator like a non-stick pan was not going to get his reputation to receive any stains. Phillips didn't know what the senator said, but in the end, the whole blame fell on his head and the senator escaped without any harm. In order to preserve the strength of the Strategic Science Reserve, a part of the earlier resources needed to be reserved. Phillips had no other choice but to make a deal with Senator Brandt and give Rogers to the other party. At least it was better than being a lab rat. The serum worked, Colonel, I can fight. Rogers tried to fight for the opportunity, but was interrupted by Colonel Phillips. Senator Brandt said there's a better battlefield for you. After saying that, he turned to leave. The Colonel is also under a lot of pressure, so don't be discouraged. Looking at the lost Rogers, Carter, who was standing next to him, said comfortingly. She held the experimental record with both hands, and sympathy in her eyes. Through the human body transformation, the original thin little man had reached 6 feet, 188 centimeters, almost as tall as Luke. Moreover, Rogers' muscles are even more bulky, like those of a bodybuilder. Luke, who was also a super soldier, wasn't this exaggerated. Where's Luke? Where is he? Rogers suddenly remembered that he hadn't seen Luke since yesterday. I don't know, the colonel said he had another mission. Carter shook her head. While the Strategic Science Reserve embarked on their journey to London, 
and Rogers was dragged by the senator to be the National War Bonds ambassador. Luke remained in Brooklyn, New York. As Carter had said, he had another mission. After that talk in the infirmary, Colonel Phillips told Luke about a highly classified and surprising plan. Even with a super soldier leading the team, the degree of difficulty is huge. Colonel Phillips had given the howling commandos to Luke, it was more than just adding some boost. As the only super soldier available, no one was more suitable to carry out the plan than Luke. In other words, the colonel needed him. That's why the desire to nurture him flowed out. Luke himself isn't surprised by this. This is one of the reasons why he didn't hide his excellent performance in Camp Lehigh. Interpersonal communication in society was essentially the exchange of interests between each other. Being able to be used by others, in a sense, is also the embodiment of value. In his last life, there was an internet meme, since I became a waste, no one can take advantage of me anymore, which did get more than a few likes. But it was actually quite reasonable after careful consideration. With the failure of the Super Soldier Project, the status of the Strategic Science Reserve obviously declined. Funds were cut, and personnel were mobilized from the rear to the front lines. These series of actions indicated that Colonel Phillips wanted to make the Strategic Science Reserve demonstrate the necessity of its existence. If not, then SSR will likely face the prospect of being eliminated. This wasn't due to any schemes or underhanded measures by political rivals. In wartime, the allocation of all resources must be based on value and efficiency. Did the colonel let me lead the howling commandos to restore the strategic science reserve status? I think my strength is strong enough to play any current plot character on my own. Luke was lying on the hotel bed, staring at the stiff uniform hanging on the coat rack. Captain Cavill, he muttered with a smile on his face. This is one of the benefits given by Colonel Phillips, it was also the benefit of leading the howling commandos. Otherwise, who would want to accept a new recruit as their superior? It took Luke less than a month to go from private third class to captain. The speed is amazing. If I really did what Colonel Phillips asked me to do, not to mention a captain, it would be possible for me to become the fastest promoted officer in history. When the time comes, if I want to get into politics, I might be able to follow Eisenhower's path and move into the White House. Luke's mind continued to think, outlining a bright blueprint for the future. A few moments later, he couldn't help but laugh out loud, laughing at himself, I seem to be thinking a little too far ahead. He was just promoted to captain and was about to lead the howling commandos. Getting rid of his unnecessary thoughts, he returned to the question of his own ability. I'm Superman now, although I'm still a less powerful version. Luke opened the character panel and looked at the data presented above. He had the same strength as when Superman first came out, running faster than a full-powered car punching through thick steel plates with one fist, dynamic vision that could even catch a bullet's trajectory. Luke's muscle density far exceeded that of ordinary people, making it difficult for small caliber bullets and cold weapons to cause fatal damage to him. It could be said that he had a body of steel, invulnerable to guns and swords, not considering heavy artillery weapons. LV-1 Civilian Superman Card The upper limit is probably an evolution of physical qualities being able to grab a bullet with my bare hands, and block explosions with my body. Luke found that if he wanted to unlock, flight, and, laser vision, he needed the LV-2 Soldier Superman card. It looks like when Superman first appeared, he wasn't that powerful, and his powers became increasingly perfect later on, so strong that a single punch broke apart the sixth dimension. Seeing that there were many Superman cards waiting to be unlocked in the conscious space, Luke suddenly felt that maybe he could evolve to that step one day. It's a beautiful world without Batman and Kryptonite. With this in mind, Luke closed his eyes and fell asleep. Old Joseph's Tavern, Brooklyn. When Luke walked in, the people who he was scheduled to meet were already sitting at the corner table. Timothy Aloysius Cadwaller Duggan, oh. My. God. Such a long name, I would rather call you Dumb Dumb Duggan. Luke beckoned for a dark beer pulled out a chair and sat down. He didn't say too many pleasantries, nor did he deliberately act warm. Duggan is a typical soldier with strong features and a handlebar mustache. After seeing his commanding officer, a guy who was a bit too young, his expression was a bit gloomy. The word, young, often implied a lack of experience in a crisis-ridden battlefield, without having gone through several wars. It also meant that giving your back to such a person could be a bad thing. Captain Cavill, you've been promoted quite quickly. I heard that you were a private third class a month ago? Duggan sneered. 
In his opinion, Luke must have climbed the ranks though someone underhanded connections. Otherwise, how else could a new recruit be directly promoted to captain? Duggan hadn't heard about Luke having any amazing achievements and merits. Luke's file was no more than a blank sheet of paper. I would prefer that you call me sir. Luke smiled, not the least bit annoyed. He turned his head, looked at another man sitting next to Duggan, and whispered, Dino Manelli. Colonel Phillips said that you're a master of disguise and at fighting. I am looking forward to seeing what you do. And you, Jimmy, Kenneth, Jeff, Luke named everyone one by one. He had seen the Howling Commandos members' profiles beforehand and had a basic understanding of the team. I am your senior officer and the captain of the Howling Commandos. At least until you receive some new orders, you will obey my command and follow my instructions. Luke leaned back in his chair and spoke in a rather casual tone. Captain Cavill, we are soldiers, we will obey commands. It seems that Duggan was the leader of this team, he took the lead in standing up to Luke, but we only respect capable people, not. By any chance, are you trying to say that just because I look young, inexperienced, without much merits, I am not qualified enough and I am putting airs in front of you? Luke impolitely interrupted Duggan, and then with a slight smile, he continued, I heard that you were proficient in combat and firearms, and even once went behind enemy lines and took out a German operative squad by yourself? That's right, and from then on, everyone calls me, Dum Dum. Duggan said with pride. The Dum Dum bullet is a kind of British made ammunition, commonly known as, expanding bullet, and, shrapnel, known for its amazing lethality. Because of the unbearable pain caused by being shot, international organizations have repeatedly requested that the use of such bullets be banned. The fact that Duggan was given such a name shows how powerful he is. To tell you the truth, I wanted to have a fair fight with you and prove that I am not what you think. However, when I think about it again, it's unfair to compete with you. Luke shrugged, took a sip from the stout on the table, and smiled, so, I'll be a little more direct, so you can see why I went from being a recruit to a captain, and why I can lead the Howling Commandos. However, I hope you won't be afraid of what you'll see later. Ha ha ha, Captain Cavill, we all are soldiers who have survived the hell-like battlefield. I will be surprised if there's anything which makes us afraid. Duggan covered his stomach and laughed exaggeratedly. In his opinion, Luke was bluffing. Was there anything that could scare him? Duggan. Did you see that? He lifted the Ford military jeep with both hands. I've got eyes, you don't have to tell me, and he twisted my lovely Winchester into a knot. Can any of you explain why my combat knife couldn't break through his skin? Is this guy even human? An hour later, Howling Commandos, who had followed Luke to Fort Drum Army Base in Jefferson County, New York, witnessed the most unbelievable and horrific scene in their life. As they have said, the members of Howling Commandos are all veterans who have experienced many battles and have special skills. Trenches that buried countless bodies, hanging flesh and blood fragments on barbed wires. They have survived that kind of hell, seen the fiercest executioners and played the role of butchers. Roaring cannons, machine guns spewing fire, steel monster-like tanks. You could say, what kind of big scene they haven't seen? It's just that, when Luke showed the Howling Commandos his power, it completely crushed the inherent perceptions they had built up over the past few decades. Until then, Duggan and his team had never imagined that anyone could lift a multi-ton military SUV like a barbell. Was he still human, don't give me that look. Luke's face still had the same calm expression. No one could see that he had just completed a full set of warm-up exercises with an SUV. I am just an ordinary soldier who yearns for peaceful, quiet life. After a few days of drawing on the energy from the sun, Luke's physique leapt another step. Unlike Superman, it was difficult for him to carry a plane which weighed hundreds of tons, but lifting an off-road vehicle weighing several tons wasn't a problem. Even strength similar to that of a super soldier was enough to shock anyone. Superpowers, aliens and other crazy stuff was limited only to science fiction movies and novels. Thus, Luke's performance shocked all the Howling Commandos. You were obviously a monster, Duggan, nicknamed, Dum Dum, took a look at the twisted Winchester and the military jeep that was sitting firmly in place, and silently swallowed his words. Cavill, sir, are you the rumored super soldier? Cavill, sir, are you the rumored super soldier? After a while, Dino Manelli whom Colonel Phillips called a master of disguise and hand-to-hand -hand combat, asked. After seeing Luke's inhuman strength, all the members of the Howling Commandos, at least Manelli himself, 
had no objection to the young captain leading him. Although he still didn't know whether Luke had the basic qualities of a leader. However, the ability to crush the Nazi army in combat was enough to lessen his main worries. No wonder Colonel Phillips asked him to lead the howling commandos. Manelli was instantly relieved, and his inner dissatisfaction dissipated. Super soldier. Dugan's eyes changed when he heard the word. He had heard about the project. It was said that it was one of the military's research projects on strengthening the human body. Yes, Steve Rogers and I both received serum injections from the Strategic Science Reserve and became super soldiers. Luke answered seriously. Although he had nothing to do with the super soldiers, this didn't prevent him from using this excuse as a cover. He wondered if, in the future, when people saw that the gap between his and Rogers' abilities was getting bigger, they would suspect that the latter had injected a fake serum. Well, sir, I'm sorry for what happened before. Duggan shrugged, no longer indifferent as he was before. After seeing Luke's real strength and knowing his status as a super soldier, he no longer worried about whether the other party would hold back the team. But now, he had different worries, will I be able to keep up? With Dugan's vast experience, he felt that if he threw Luke onto the battlefield, the Nazi soldiers would cry out in fear. Hitler, who was far away in Berlin, was about to lose all of his sleep. Side quest. Howling Commando, the war hero's first step, completed. Requirements. Join the team and get the approval of three or more team members, achieved. Reward. Scarecrow's fear poison gas times 10, obtained. Luke received the message that the quest was completed. It was true that for veterans, the fastest way to get their approval is to show your ability. Reputation value detected. Opening shop. Luke, without any change in expression, immediately opened the character panel. The stats on the panel were updated, and a reputation value of 50 points was displayed, it was probably from the Howling Commandos members. It seems that by generating respect, worship and admiration, I can gain reputation points. Luke reasoned. He opened the shop. As imagined, there's a wide range of products, it wasn't very different from the game. There are various interesting props, such as, Clark Kent's glasses. The description underneath read, as long as you wear it, you can form an absolute disguise that's impossible to detect, with the image of a tall, strong, bright reporter. Another example is, Batman's escape technique, which is specifically described as, when any target turns its back to you, activate this item to disappear from the target's field of vision. There are also some skill cards for heroic characters, such as, Master Assassin, which came from Deathstroke. The effect was to master all kinds of firearms and cold weapons. Defeat enemies whose ability is several times stronger than yourself in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Another example is the, Expert in Deception, from the famous exorcist Constantine, described as, having the ability to convince, deceive, all, even angels and devils. The list went on and on. All of these could be exchanged with reputation points. This is quite interesting. Luke's eyes slightly lit up. He was particularly interested in the skill card, ladies' man, in the shop. From Nightwing, Dick Grayson. The specific effect is, against women in a regular relationship, especially those with a superhero profession, your charm will be fully unleashed. How did this wonderful ability get in? After a quick glance at the items in the shop, Luke looked around at the other members who were currently busy cleaning their weapons or just relaxing. He cleared his throat, looked at the howling commandos, and said, Let me tell you one thing, Colonel Phillips sent me to lead this team in preparation for a surprise attack. I can't tell you much specifics for now, but the final destination of the team is Italy. I have the passports ready and suitable identities. You can think of this mission as a covert operation, to sneak into Sicily, posing as smugglers and bypassing the blockade from the maritime patrol fleet. The members of Howling Commandos looked at each other. Most of their previous tasks were to attack the transport convoys of the Axis countries or assassinate some senior general. They weren't really familiar with such things as infiltration. However, after listening to it, the members, headed by Dum Dum Duggan, uniformly answered, We are at your disposal, sir. I believe that after this mission, Howling Commando's name, and all of your names, will be on the White House table. Luke promised. If the mission planned by Colonel Phillips could be accomplished, Ren, Luke's name is likely to spread throughout the Allies. When the time comes, the reputation points that can be harvested may even be exchanged for a bunch of skill cards, or even unlock new character cards. Luke took all the members of the Howling Commandos from the East Coast, through the Atlantic Ocean, they crossed the Strait of Gibraltar, 
and entered the territorial waters of Italy. Because Spain was a neutral country during World War II, and there was a British naval base stationed nearby, they didn't face any trouble till that point. After a long, bumpy ocean journey and several routine identity checks along the way, Luke and the others arrived in Sicily and were about to disembark in Palermo. The members of Howling Commandos couldn't believe it, they arrived without any hitches, right under the nose of the Axis. Dum Dum Duggan couldn't help but sigh, saying, This is the most thrilling thing I've ever done in my life. The others agreed, like lions walking into a wolf's den. Even if the individual's strength was strong, as long as their identity is exposed, they would be eaten by the wolves. Maybe, when the time came, their Captain Luke might be able to escape by himself with his strength. But they were destined to fall under the Nazi guns. We have arrived at our destination, someone will meet us later, they will make arrangements for our hideout. Luke spread out a map of Sicily in front of him and said, I will repeat the plan. I am now Vito Corleone, a Sicilian who left his homeland at an early age, and now I am returning as a smuggler, and a merchant who sells goods between the Allies and the Axis powers. But this is just a cover to deal with the Axis Navy. I personally captured a Hydra assassin in Brooklyn, named Greg Nissen, and the Strategic Science Reserve got a lot of information from him. So, now that we have arrived in Sicily, we are going to meet an SSR informant. My identity to the Axis soldiers, while on the way, will be that of a secret envoy from Berlin to give orders to Mussolini from the Fuhrer. The British had cracked the enigma, and radio communication had become a reliable way of transmitting secret information. So disguising ourselves as a secret envoy from Berlin with the knowledge of the secret information would not arouse any suspicion. Our mission, is to go to Rome and kill Mussolini? Dum Dum Dugan's eyes widened, he wondered if he had heard wrong. This task was too crazy. If it wasn't for the fact that Luke's reliability and calmness had been recognized by his teammates, he would have thought they were joking. No, it's not that exaggerated. Mussolini's government is just a puppet. He himself was relieved of all powers by the King of Italy and imprisoned in Pancha Island, and was later rescued by Hitler's men. Seeing Luke shake his head and vetoed, the members of Howling Commandos were relieved. At this time in Sicily, there were two German armored divisions. If they made any trouble, they would definitely be shot dead. As for the assassination of Mussolini, it was even more impossible. Only God knew how much security there was around the dictator. Our mission is to enter Rome, capture Mussolini alive, and assist the Allied forces to land in Sicily, become the first team to conquer Italy. Luke finally revealed the main objective. For the next few minutes, the entire cabin fell into dead silence. Everyone's mouth was wide open with a dumbfounded expression, did I hear it wrong or is this guy joking? Sir, are you serious? Dum Dum Duggan hesitantly asked. He found that the young captain could always give his teammates surprises. Kidnapping a government leader with just a few people and getting away with it, not only did it sound implausible, it is no different than suicide. Luke propped his hands on the table, leaning forward, his tall figure exuding an oppressive atmosphere. The members who wanted to express their opinions subconsciously reduced their voices and shut their mouths. But the actual situation isn't so bad, first of all, our opponents are the Italians, so I don't think I need to say anything about this country's military capabilities. The American newspapers said, if Italy stayed neutral, the Germans would have to increase their forces by five divisions. If Italy joined the Allies, they would have to add ten divisions to their army. But when Italy joined the Axis, the Germans had no other choice but to send 20 divisions to protect them. Luke used a humorous tone to ease the atmosphere a little. Compared with the French who raised the white flag in 40 days, the Italians aren't much better. You certainly don't know that the British army led 25 people in World War I, fought against 10,000 Italian troops, and captured 8,000 people. In fact, in terms of war, they can't even win against Ethiopia. Luke's tone was impassioned, and his eyes flashed slightly. Truthfully, most of the stories he said were just rumors in his previous life, and their authenticity needed to be verified. Truthfully, most of the stories he said were just rumors in his previous life, and their authenticity needed to be verified. For example, the Ethiopians of World War II weren't the primitive natives that many nations thought they were, in fact, their army was known as the Lions of East Africa, and was quite strong. If it weren't for the subsequent use of poison gas warfare by Italy in the second invasion, it wouldn't be possible to take over Ethiopia, and maybe the history would have repeated itself, and Italy would have suffered another defeat. As for the Italian military, it wasn't that miserable, although it did become the butt of jokes, its military strength wasn't that weak, 
and it also performed well in World War II. For example, in the Second Battle of El Alamein, the 185th, Fulgur, paratroopers blocked the British armored offensive with burning bottles, anti-tank guns, mines and explosives under the absolute disadvantage of 113 troops and 1-70 armor. All in all, what Luke said before was to boost the howling commando's morale and ease the fear of the members. Maybe he could raid Rome by himself and capture Mussolini alive, but he can't finish the task of assisting the Allied forces to land in Sicily alone. But what we have to face isn't only the Italian army, but also the Germans. Duggan was a little shaken by this mission, even though Luke's speech was quite compelling. At least, the members of Howling Commandos now believed that the Italian army was vulnerable, and it seems that it wasn't so difficult to advance into Rome. The Allies will take care of it for us, Luke firmly answered. He agreed to follow Colonel Philip's plan, not because he was hot-headed, but after careful consideration. According to the original timeline of World War II, the Allies had already finished the campaign in North Africa. The next step was to counterattack Italy, opening up a new battlefield. In July, the Allied landing forces will set sail in the ports on the east coast of North Africa, the Mediterranean Sea, as well as Oran and Algiers. Then, the army led by General Patton went straight to Sicily. And right now, it isn't too far from the fall of Mussolini's government and the surrender of Italy. Perhaps it seemed to others that it would be an impossible task to raid Rome and capture the leader alive. But Luke was confident because he was standing on the rumbling wheels of history, rolling forward. How much reputation can I gain by becoming a conqueror of Italy? Luke couldn't help thinking. Spreading his own name all over the world, as a reputation grinding method, it was almost like cheating. This was something he couldn't do in the game. At your command, sir, after a long while, Duggan gritted his teeth and made a decision. Anyway, he arrived in Sicily, surrounded by enemies. There were two roads in front of them, either to complete the mission and return home with honor, or choose desertion and appear before a court martial. When Duggan, the leader, said this, the rest of the team didn't hesitate anymore. Sicily is located in the south of Italy, across the Strait of Messina from the Apennines in the northeast, and occupies an important position in the commercial trade routes of the Mediterranean. Therefore, when Luke came ashore from Palermo, he thought he would encounter a rather strict interrogation. To his own surprise, Luke, who was currently disguised as a smuggler, Vito Corleone, easily bribed the officers here with only 20 cases of cigarettes, some ham and bread, and was able to easily get through. It can be seen from this what later generations had said, the whole Italian military was corrupt from top to bottom during World War II, it wasn't without reason. After landing, Luke saw several tall men with caps and tattoos on their arms on the port wharf, secretly looking at his group. He walked over with a kind face and spoke fluent Italian, do you know where the Bronze Bell Tavern is? The Superman card brought benefits beyond just physical strengthening. When it came to academic talent and planning skills, Luke had improved significantly. Superman, who came to the studio next door, may not be inferior to Batman, who was called world's greatest detective when he really used his brain. However, perhaps it was because of Batman that Superman was too lazy to think. Luke smiled and shook off these frivolous thoughts as he started to chat with these tall men. After a brief refresher course on Italian prior to his trip, he was now able to speak the local language with a slight Sicilian regional accent. This was also one of the reasons why the Howling Commandos was able to get past the patrolling warships several times along the way. Soon those people were convinced of his Vito Corleone identity. Even though Luke told Dum Dum Duggan that he grew up in Brooklyn, the latter got a bit skeptical, believing that the young captain was most likely from Sicily. Mr. Corleone? The man in the lead frowned and asked. You can call me Vito. Luke said indifferently. Hearing the secret code line, these men dressed in similar clothes quickly changed their attitudes and became respectful. Mr. Corleone, Don Casa is waiting for you in the Bronze Bell Tavern, the car is ahead. Then, he waved and three black cars drove up in front of the pier entrance. The man opened the door and waited for Luke to sit inside. The, Don Casa, as they called him, was the informant for the Strategic Science Reserve. As they got in the car, Luke gestured to the howling commandos to keep up their vigilance. Soon, the motorcade raised a bit of dust and headed for the Bronze Bell Tavern. Casa Alessandro, the only remaining mafia leader in Sicily. The mafia, which was famous in later years, and even world-renowned, didn't have it easy at this time. 
In 1925, after Mussolini gained absolute control over Italy, he made a famous national speech on the Mafia. Through the loudspeakers, he vowed to all Italians to purify the social air, crack down on crime and to eliminate evil. To eradicate the Mafia, the cancer, from Italy, no one expected that Mussolini would actually do what he said he would do and start a serious raid on the Mafia. Openly, his dictatorship commanded the military and police to arrest nearly 1,000 Mafia members, however, in truth, he directly bombed their hideouts. Once captured, they didn't even get a basic trial. A full-scale bloodbath was directly unleashed. In Sicily's Fountain Square, people were executed every day. Blood seeped into every floor tile and land. As a result, the Mafias died or fled, either by being arrested and imprisoned or by fleeing overseas. By now, Sicily was a clean slate, free of sinister powers. People were no longer worried of the gangsters' harassments, but had to endure the dictator's reign of terror. However, it was worth mentioning that the Mafia, which had been weakened in Italy, re-emerged from America and had regained its vitality. For the future Hollywood gangster films, it created a large number of inexhaustible character material. Luke, who had come into contact with the Irish mob and dealt with Italian Mafia, knew this very well. Seeing the poor living environment in Sicily and holding a grudge against Mussolini, many Mafia families secretly aligned themselves with the Allied powers. This was the case with Casa Alessandro, who had now become an informant for the Strategic Science Reserve. Thirty minutes later, the car stopped at the door of the Bronze Bell Tavern. Several burly men with tattoos stood at the door. Luke was stopped after he got out of the car. Mr. Alessandro, you want me to go inside alone? You guys don't seem sincere. The leader of the group looked a bit puzzled, and after a moment of silence, he said, The situation in Sicily is very tense, Mr. Corleone, please understand. Well, you can bring an attendant. Don Casa is very careful, this is also for his safety. Since you're being so polite, I don't have any complaints. Luke took off his black woolen coat and handed it to Manelli behind him, signaling that he was unarmed. Then, he reached out and beckoned Dum Dum Duggan to follow him. You stay where you are and wait for me to come out. Luke ordered. Manelli nodded, holding the coat in one hand and carrying a suitcase in the other. There was a submachine gun hidden inside. He was sure that if the Mafia dared to play dirty, he and his team could turn the Bronze Bell Tavern upside down. Luke walked into the tavern, which was now a Mafia hideout. The thick round tables were full of family members. Most of them were young and strong thugs, who belonged to the Legion, and were responsible for engaging in violence, fighting over or guarding territory. Being closely watched by over 30 strong men, who were also rumored to be one of the most ferocious Mafia, the average person would be weak in the legs, unable to walk. But Luke was calm and steady, and his temperament didn't diminish. Mr. Corleone, we welcome your arrival. The bearded man, at the center of it all, got up and greeted him. He was Casa Alessandro, the former head of the Mafia's Camorra family, now just a thug. When the Mafia was purged, every family suffered heavy losses, and even the head of the family was put to death in public. Such iron fisted means and ruthless behavior greatly shook the Mafia. The special background, the special opportunity, in turn, gave Casa a chance to make a name for himself. He had gathered a group of people around him under the name of the Camorra family and recruited a lot of good people while the storm was brewing. I guess since you were willing to see me, you know why we are here for, right? Luke leaned back in his chair with a relaxed and calm tone. Casa was not only an informant for the Strategic Science Reserve, but also a mole for the future Allied landing in Sicily. In the original history, the American Intelligence Department chose the local Mafia leader, Salvatore Lucania, nicknamed Lucky Luciano. He was a big shot in the New York underworld and was quite established. On the Italian side, it should have been Don Carlo, but now there was a slight change. The Sicilian Mafia did play a significant role in the landings. They provided all kinds of support toward the Allies, delivered messages, handed out leaflets to persuade surrender and so on. Therefore, after the war, Don Carlo became the mayor of Villalba, while Salvatore Luciano was spared from prison and his wealth and reputation grew. Luke didn't mind giving this opportunity to Casa Alessandro, who was sitting opposite him. I understand, yes, sir, I am ready and waiting for instructions from the Allies. Alessandro smiled pleasantly. Twenty trained gunmen, I've got them ready. It's just that with so many people sneaking into Rome, it's a little hard to get passes, the time is too short. 
Seeing Alessandro's embarrassed expression, Luke expressionlessly said, That's your problem, Casa. If you can't do it, then I'll find someone else. I heard about Don Carlo, who was thrown into prison by Mussolini, and he was a delight. That stronzo Don Carlo is nothing, Sicily is now Don Casa's even the governor of Palermo. That stronzo Don Carlo is nothing, Sicily is now Don Casa's even the governor of Palermo. Before Alessandro could finish his words, the young man standing behind him stepped forward, seemingly uncomfortable with Luke's disdain for his own boss. Luke narrowed his eyes and looked up. The other person's appearance was quite similar to Alessandro's. He may be a family member related by blood. You have some good people. Luke was worried about the lack of an excuse to put down the mafia leader and test his determination to cooperate with the Allies. But now he got a chance to make a scene. Elio. Shut up. When Alessandro heard his nephew say such things, he rushed to slap him across the face. The young man in front of him wasn't someone he could afford to offend. Mussolini had taught the mafia a lesson. No matter how powerful the mafia was, there was no room for resistance against the state apparatus. This young man, who called himself, Vito Corleone, represented the American military and is an ally. Once they anger the other party, they won't end up any better than if they provoked Mussolini. Boom. However, when Alessandro had just touched his nephew's face at that slap, a sound echoed in the Bronze Bell Tavern. No one saw exactly when Luke got up and how he pinned the young man named Elio on the table. The blood flowed down from his forehead as if his skull was cracked and dripped to the ground. Cough cough, Don Casa, uncle. Elio felt his head was crushed like a watermelon, and it could explode completely in the next moment. He didn't know the terrible strength the young man had. Where did it come from? Five fingers and a palm came together like iron pinchers, pressing tightly on the back of his head. The excruciating pain, and the fear of death, made Elio's resolve instantly collapse. His tears flowed along with the blood and covered his whole face. Casa, tell me, what does the mafia do to people who don't respect the alliance between two families? Luke slowly sat back in his seat, ignoring the tense atmosphere and completely treating the group of people behind him as air. As the only remaining mafia leader in Sicily, even the police officers are reluctant to mess with the ruthless man. Alessandro had a great deal of prestige and authority within his family and in Palermo. His status and power were increasing with each passing day. When ordinary people see him, they must address him as, sir, to show their respect. And other heads of the family, either brought in, or suppressed. Gradually, every meeting turned out to be a meeting where Alessandro expressed his personal opinion and allocated their interests and turf. Although the mafia wasn't as good as it used to be, they always had to worry about whether Mussolini would come for the purge again and had to be on the run. But Alessandro, who had taken advantage of this power struggle to rise to the top, gradually made them stronger in his hands. This was a fact that didn't need to be questioned. Therefore, the SSR took a fancy to him and he, seeing a chance, became an informant. However, Alessandro, who was regarded as, Don, by people and worshipped by many members, showed a trace of fear on his face, when he heard Luke's indifferent tone. Having experienced Mussolini's great purge, he had a strong psychological shadow about the military, which was essentially a powerful institution. If he offended this young captain, he would lose support of the Allied forces. Sooner or later, after the war, he would be targeted by the purge. Even if he switched to Mussolini's side, according to the dictator's temper, he was afraid it wouldn't end well. Thinking to this point, Alessandro's hands trembled slightly, on his chubby face, a touch of ruthlessness rose. Mr. Corleone, I apologize to you for Elio's disrespect. He placed his palm on the table, and with a swish, drew a dagger from behind his waist and sliced down viciously. Ah! Ah! The screams of pain echoed in the Bronze Bell Tavern. A thick radish-like finger tumbled on the table. Large beads of sweat seeped out from his forehead, rolling down his nose and slowly dripping. Alessandro gasped and said, Mr. Corleone, are you satisfied? Luke loosened the palm on Elio's head, deadpan, he slowly shook his head. I didn't tell you to make amends, Casa, I wanted you to explain how the Mafia treats people who don't respect their alliance. Mr. Corleone, I, don't you understand, Casa, please tell me, how much does your Mafia value the friendships with us? Luke's voice remained cold, but it brought heavy pressure to Alessandro. He knew that the young captain was not an amateur that could be fooled. The bloody practice of cutting off one's finger off is a common way for the mafia to ask for mercy, but it failed to impress the other party. 
Alessandro glanced at Elio, who was pale with fear, and sighed inside. Carmelo. Drag Elio down and bring me his hand. Being able to seize the opportunity and become the top leader of the Camorra family, Alessandro had guts. Although Elio was his nephew, he would still give him up in order to calm Luke's anger. Who told him to be too stupid? Just like the former mafia members, they thought that they were the real masters of Italy. For example, Francisco Cuchar, who triggered the end of the mafia, is such a fool. He was both the mayor of Piana de Grigio and a major player in the local mafia. When he greeted Mussolini, who was the great leader at the time, he asked him in a rather arrogant tone why he had to bring so many police officers. Because, Kuchar felt that no one could pose a threat to him on his own turf, with the protection of the mafia. This almost rude attitude annoyed Mussolini, who was already very powerful at that time. A few months later, the dictator summoned 4,000 special forces and 6,000 police officers and launched a heavy-handed campaign to eliminate the mafia. As for Kuchar, he was arrested and imprisoned for insulting the Fuhrer, contempt of law, and rebelling against the government. Alessandro, who has had the horrible experience of being wanted and almost executed, wouldn't make the same mistake as that fool Kuchar. Mr. Corleone, you will forever be a friend of the Mafia. Anyone who disrespects you is disrespecting me and disrespecting the Camorra family. In less than a minute, the man named Carmelo presented a hand placed on a tray. Are you satisfied with this explanation? If this isn't enough, I'll have Elio sent to the slaughterhouse later. Seeing Alessandro's trepidation and almost groveling, Luke's cold expression suddenly beamed with a smile. He knew the mafia were contemptuous and only with a severe threat would they show respect. Thus he acted in such a way. Luke then picked up the glass on the table and said, Come, a toast to our friendship. The smile was mild and friendly, without any sign of the previous aggression. His ability to change his face so suddenly surprised Dum Dum Duggan behind him, and thought, the captain is a scary man. The vicious mafia was like a docile sheep before him. Alessandro smiled at the smell of blood and drained his glass of red wine. Get things done as soon as possible, and the allies will never forget your efforts. Before leaving the pub, Luke patted Alessandro on the shoulder and added, your compatriots are doing well in North America and New York. They go in and out of high-end hotels with members of parliament, and hug Hollywood actresses, Casa, I admire you very much, you deserve a chance. Mr. Corleone, I will remember this personal friendship. Alessandro paused and then he moved. He bent down slightly, lowered his head and waited for Luke to hold out his left hand. This was the highest etiquette from the mafia, to show respect. Often, only the godfather could get, the kiss, from a don. No need. I have seen your respect and attitude. Luke's mouth twitched. He didn't have the habit of letting men kiss the back of his hand. Out of the Bronze Bell Tavern, the howling commandos got into their cars and went to check in to one of Palermo's top hotels. On the way, Duggan, who was sitting next to him, had an awkward expression. Do you want to ask why I should treat Alessandro with such an attitude? Luke opened his closed eyes. Sitting in the front passenger seat was Manelli, no outsiders. So, he didn't hide it. He said, Duggan, you don't understand the gangster mindset. Although the Italian mafia has always used family honor and blood ties as a means to guarantee loyalty, but that doesn't mean they're actually a bunch of honorable criminals. Duggan nodded thoughtfully. He remembered that Luke seemed to have close ties with the Irish mob. When you want to tame a vicious dog, you have to beat it with a wooden stick until it's afraid to show you its fangs again. The same is true of the mafia. Luke looked at the pedestrians in Palermo through the window and smiled, and human nature is a very complicated thing. Casa definitely had a grudge against me when his men brought that guy's severed hand. But because of my status, and the fact that allies have won successive battles, he was afraid to show it. But when I told him that I would support him as the voice of the allies in Sicily, and he would be richly rewarded after the war, Casa's heart immediately felt grateful, with only a few unpleasant emotions left behind. When you use harsh methods, establish unquestionable authority, and then give them a small reward, they will be grateful to you. That's the typical gangster mentality. The hotel where Luke and his party stayed was an important picturesque spot in a hilltop town, Tormina, on the east coast of Sicily. The climate here was spring all the year round, with beautiful scenery. There was a cliff on one side and the sea on the other. Like stones, urban buildings were piled up on the stepped peaks of the mountain. Luke had to agree, Alessandro is really good at what he does. 
Or, to describe it more accurately, Alessandro knew how to please his superiors. Luke came to the hotel called, Walcheria, and learned that Alessandro had already reserved an entire third floor for him and his entourage. Moreover, there were few reasons why he chose this small hotel with little reputation. On one hand, because there were few guests, it wouldn't be too eye-catching. On the other hand, the Walcheria was located at the top of the small town in Tormina. If you stay in a room on the third floor, one only needs to open the window to overlook the whole town, feel the moist sea breeze, and hear the sound of the waves, making them feel inner tranquility. Many people like this feeling. Luke is no exception. According to the plan, he needed Alessandro to recruit 20 well-trained gunmen and get a pass to enter Rome. After calculating the time, Luke may stay in Tormina for four to five days. It was a good thing to have comfortable accommodation and environment. Luke and the team chose their own rooms, as a precaution, it would have been Dum Dum Duggan, or Dino Manelli, in the same room as the captain. This can play a preventive role, but also facilitate dealing with possible unexpected situations. It's just that, after seeing Luke's great strength, members of the Howling Commandos had said that they were the ones who needed to be protected. Therefore, the two rooms next to Luke became the hot items in the team. In the end, Dum Dum Duggan and Manelli, the two veterans, received the benefit of being protected by the super soldier. In the next few days, Duggan and Manelli will take turns watching Alessandro. Although he looks like a wise man, we should also prevent him from making any stupid mistakes. In Luke's room, the members of Howling Commandos gathered to make plans for their next move. In addition to Luke, who was their captain, there were five other people in this team dispatched by the SSR. Dum Dum Duggan, as a frontrunner, was the most distinguished man in the team. Dino Manelli, who is always taciturn and quiet, is a scout and an infiltration specialist. The following team members were, respectively, the Sniper Jimmy, called the Wild West, a marksman with 100% hit rate. Jeff, in charge of the surprise attacks, and Kenneth, who was a gunner and experienced driver. Duggan and I will be posing as Berlin's secret emissary, with letters and necessary props to verify our identities. The Allies did capture a Berlin secret emissary two weeks ago, thanks to reliable information the SSR extracted from the Hydra assassin. Luke spreads out a map of Rome, with a clear layout of the troops on it. The rest of you will arrive in Rome with Alessandro's team of gunmen, and on the day of the operation, Jimmy, you will take the high ground, that's the spot. Jeff and Kenneth will lead the gun team and create chaos in Venice Square. The chief officer guarding Sicily is Italian General Gazzoni. He has 11 local divisions and two German armored divisions. During this time, the Allies will carry out a regular bombing and drive the fleet into the Strait of Tunisia, taking Pantelleria as a stronghold, creating the illusion of landing soon and restraining Gazzoni's attention. Our task is to break into Venice Palace. It will take less than 24 hours to coerce Mussolini as a hostage and I believe the King of Italy will issue a proclamation to depose the Prime Minister. Anyone with foresight can see that the Axis powers have lost their momentum. Then, we only need to hand over the dictator to the Allied forces. As for Britain, the United States, the Army and Navy, it doesn't matter. However, my personal suggestion is to make a gesture of goodwill to General Eisenhower. Luke finished his long speech, and the members of Howling Commandos looked at each other and suddenly smiled. Their hearts felt like a boulder had been lifted, and they all sighed with relief. Despite the fact that the young commander, who had previously denigrated the Italian army as worthless, was able to break into enemy territory and capture the leader with a single team, sounded like a legendary story only written in a third-rate novel, and had no truth to it at all. The Howling Commandos were willing to follow Luke, not because of his charisma, but because they had no other choice. Anyway, they were all pulled aboard. What else can they do if they didn't follow the captain's orders? However, seeing Luke's plan and his confidence, the Howling Commandos had no other ideas. They felt they could trust this young captain, let's disperse. Feeling the change of atmosphere in the team, Luke smiled. Perhaps it's not until this moment that he is truly recognized as the leader of this team. After a short rest, Luke enjoyed a big seafood meal alone, and stood at the balcony overlooking the serene sky. The afterglow of the sun as it sank into the horizon, children playing on the silver beach, and rows of palm trees swaying and dancing by the evening wind. Further away, the seagulls skimmed over the water, catching fish from the surging waves and tides. Luke's inner mood relaxed and a look of longing rose in his eyes. In a few days, no matter the Axis or the Allies, 
everyone will hear his name and his legendary deeds. Even if I don't follow the plot and Captain America, I can still be a hero in the eyes of the world. Luke smiled. To conquer a country with less than 30 people. This would be an amazing feat that could go down in history. Just as Pizarro conquered the Inca Empire that had a population of about 6 million with less than 200 people. After taking a deep breath and calming his thought, Luke went out alone in his rare leisure time. He walked along the street and came across a magnificent theater, where people were crowded and enthusiastic. Under the sparkling night sky, he could hear the song of Oedipus, or Antigone, when he stood still. Of course, he also met many charming Italian girls during this period. It's a pity that Luke didn't have any intention of having a fling, and failed to live up to these beautiful women's fiery enthusiasm. After walking aimlessly for 40 minutes, he returned to the hotel. Hum. Luke, who was about to push the door open, stared at it and burst out with a cold glow. With his keen perception, he clearly heard another person's breathing in the room. Seemingly indistinct, it was difficult to detect it unless he listened carefully. Is Casa really stupid enough to betray me and give up the olive branch from the Allies? Or was the plan discovered by Hydra? A scurry of thoughts ran through Luke's mind. He gently pushed open the door and stepped on the soft carpet, without making any sound. The sea breeze blew through the half-open window as Luke walked slowly to the big bed in the main bedroom. He was confident that as long as the intruder showed the slightest movement, he would be able to break his opponent's neck in less than a second. Got you, ah. Uh. Luke fiercely lifted the covers and threw himself on top of them, pressing his right hand against the intruder's neck. A woman. Luke, who was on top of the other person, had a shocked look in his eyes. A woman in silk nightgown was lying in his bed, she has wavy black hair, long legs slightly folded, and beautiful eyes full of tears, like a poor lost lamb. Who are you? Luke paused for a long while before he asked this. This woman, who was overflowing with maturity and beautiful curves, didn't look like a Hydra assassin. Her muscles didn't show signs of training, they were firm but lacked strength. And with a glance at the silk nightgown, there was no place to hide the weapons. My name is, Malina. The woman's voice was as weak as her appearance. Hearing the woman's answer, Luke paused. The name sounded familiar. Then, he quickly realized that this was most likely the work of the mafia leader Alessandro. To make up for his nephew's offense? Say he sent a woman to him? Do I look thirsty? Luke silently noted down Alessandro's name. Do you know who I am? The trivial thoughts just lasted a nanosecond. Luke looked at Malina beneath him, and a look of amazement appeared in his eyes. He had to say, this woman fully embodied the word, beautiful. Just like goddess Venus of Rome, she exuded a charm, which could make any man swoon. She was like a ripe fruit on the branches. Even if Luke didn't taste it personally, he could imagine it from the fragrant aroma that filled his mind. Mr. Corleone, Don Alessandro said you're a powerful businessman. Malina looked away as if she didn't want to look into Luke's eyes. Her tone was mournful. Alessandro must have forced her to Luke's room. I didn't know Casa would do such a thing. Luke was embarrassed to look at Malina that had tears on her face. His personality was also affected due to the Superman card, so how could he possibly do something like taking a woman by force? It's all Alessandro's fault. So, Mr. Corleone, can you get up first? It's a little painful for me. The mature beauty beneath Luke's body had a hint of aggression and shame in her voice. Ah, oh, oh. When he heard Malena's weak voice requesting him, Luke realized that he was still on top of the person. He simply got up and sat on the edge of the bed and asked, Did Casa send you here? Hmm. Alessandro said that as long as I can satisfy, you, the mafia, can help me get rid of the harassment from the officers and supply me with enough food every day. Malena lowered her head and turned to her side hiding in the shadows. Unfortunately, she couldn't conceal the beautiful view. The moonlight outside the window spilled into the room, sketching out the graceful curve of this beautiful mature girl. It was pure but seductive. That thin silk nightgown draped on the outside, revealing her shoulders, in addition to adding a different kind of hidden sensual effect, there was no other role. Those beautiful eyes full of tears are full of clear and lovely sorrow. It would always attract the male's desire to protect. The officers, through conversation, Luke learned that Malina was a schoolteacher whose husband was drafted into the army on their wedding night to join the brutal war. Her beauty brought her many coveting eyes and unnecessary trouble. 
Just like an unattended orchard, full and attractive fruit, anyone would think of picking it with their own hands. The difference was that some people could only bury their desires in their hearts, while others have the means to implement them. Angelo, the constable of the small town of Tormina, was such a man. He had the intent, and the courage, to put them into practice. If it weren't for his sturdy, ball and chawn at home, with a voice so loud it sounded like a broken gong, the shrewish wife, who made a scene now and then. Angelo, the constable, may have picked this beautiful and delicate flower, Malina, by coercion. It was a turbulent time when the war between the Axis and the Allies had reached Sicily. During the war, Italy's monetary system collapsed, and prices soared. Also, Mussolini's control measures restricted the trading of food and gold jewelry. As a result, Italians were left to scavenge for food while cursing the damned dictator. Malina had her job. Apart from dealing with boring men's foul language in small towns and the harassment of the constable, she could still live and continue to stick to her boundaries. With the war hitting Sicily, the calmness of the past was broken. Everything had changed. Men in the small town seemed to become fierce all suddenly. They are like hungry wolves, waiting for someone to break into the orchard first and pick this ripe fruit. After that, Malina, who had lost her perseverance and chastity, would sooner or later become a plaything in this small town. Your father is ill? Luke's face did not change, and he continued to ask. Yes. Drugs and food are controlled, and the constable said he could get them for me, as long as, I would stay with him for one night. Malina seemed somewhat reluctant to speak. Her eyes looked sad, I'm ready to give in. It's too hard for a woman to live alone. Besides, I can't let my father be taken away by illness. But Don Alessandro came to the door, and he said if I could, satisfy you he will guarantee my future life. Malena's tone sounded helpless, and whether it's the town constable or the Sicilian mafia, there's nothing she can do against them. I got it, Malena. You should rest here tonight. What comes next, I will ask Casa myself. Luke said faintly. He looked away and got up to leave the room. There is no doubt that Malena was a stunner who can arouse men's lust, but Luke wasn't interested in letting his lower body control his upper body and engage in lewd acts. One of the reasons why humans are at the top of the food chain compared to other animals in nature is because they probably know how to analyze and reflect. Desires do not easily dominate their brains. While an animal's nature is aggressive out of necessity, human nature is the foundation for establishing order. Mr. Corleone, seeing Malina call out to him, Luke waved his hand and said, There's some misunderstanding in the middle, and it's hard for me to explain it to you. I'm sorry for your fright and unnecessary trouble. Looking at this beautiful girl's indelible fear, Luke didn't say much, he just walked out of the room. Tonight, he had to rest in the second bedroom, at least, it's better than sleeping on the sofa. Luke thought so the following day, Luke went downstairs to order breakfast and spoke to the mafia people guarding the hotel. Within 20 minutes, Alessandro arrived in a hurry. He walked into Luke's room, stood respectfully, and didn't even stretch out his hand to wipe the sweat from his forehead. Why, Casa? You sent a woman to my bed last night and used such underhanded means. Luke sat at the table, leisurely enjoying the local breakfast and pizza frittata. After picking up the coffee with his right hand and taking a sip, he added, Did I come to Sicily to find a woman? Casa, I know what you mean, but I want to tell you that I value a person's ability more than flattery. Alessandro nodded. He thought that a hot blooded young man like Luke would never be indifferent to a beautiful woman like Malina. Besides, in the impression of this mafia leader, the most effective way to please a big shot was to send money and women. But when it came to Mr. Corleone, it didn't work. Luke seemed to guess Alessandro's thoughts but chose to not say anything. Twenty gunmen are ready, and they are all good guys. They have long been dissatisfied with Mussolini, that cold-blooded butcher, and cruel executioner. Since Luke mentioned ability, Alessandro was eager to show his. As for the pass, I've settled it and paid a lot of money to bribe the top brass of the Navy patrol. You can get it the day after tomorrow at the latest. Facts had proven that Alessandro wouldn't only please his superiors, he also had a remarkable ability to handle affairs. Luke nodded with satisfaction, he couldn't stay in Sicily for too long. Otherwise, his fake identity of being Vito Corleone, a Berlin envoy, would be exposed. Taking advantage of the time difference in information exchange between Germany and Italy. As expected, it was the best way to enter Rome and approach Mussolini. If something unexpected happens, Luke could act alone and sneak into Venice Palace. One must know, 
the true meaning of being an assassin is to kill all enemies without anyone knowing. Judging from this, Luke felt that he would be an excellent assassin. However, Mr. Corleone, I'd like to say a few things in defense of the previous incident. After talking about business, Alessandro's eyes twinkled as he said, I sent you a woman, not because I thought you were a man obsessed with beauty. Maybe you didn't know, Malina is a famous beauty in Sicily. Her husband Nino was taken away by the conscription officer on her wedding night. The other day, there was news of his death. Recently, Malena's father broke a leg and became seriously ill, it can be said that her situation is very bad. I thought a promising young man like you, Mr. Corleone, would naturally have a warm heart. Malena, she's desperate now. It's better for her if you take a fancy to her. That's why I took the liberty of sending her to your room. Luke's face was shocked, he didn't expect the mafia leader to be so brazen. He suddenly felt that he was wrong. Why would a bootlicker have nothing? Clearly, he had everything. Although Alessandro looked like a flattering jester, as the object of his flattery, Luke couldn't feel any ill feelings. This showed, even bootlickers had a hierarchy and depended on status. As for Alessandro, Luke could say he was already at the top. This guy is on another level, Luke told himself. He wiped the corners of his mouth, finished eating, and went to the living room. Alessandro took over the role of a gopher, bowing behind him. Who would have thought that this seemingly honest and loyal bearded mafia leader would do this? Mr. Corleone, to tell you the truth, in Sicily, there are a lot of men who covet Malina. She is alone and a widow. Even the constable is staring at this piece of juicy steak, if she can follow you, at least, it's much better than being reduced to a public plaything. Alessandro leaned against the sofa and looked carefully at Luke. Then leave her behind. Besides, don't think about sending me money and women, just do your own thing. Luke thought for a moment and answered in a soft voice. As a superior, he can't disappoint Alessandro's painstaking efforts. After all, as the mafia leader, bothering to do this kind of pimping, he would be despised by his own underlings. By the way, the constable, let's get rid of him first. The topic didn't stay on Malina, the charming and beautiful widow who was too pitiful. Luke didn't want to buy or trade her treating her like property. A lonely woman with a stunningly beautiful and young face born in these turbulent times will definitely face many bad things. It had become the root of Malena's miserable life. Women in the small town rejected Malena and thought that she was only seducing men. Men coveted Malena's charming body and looked forward to being seduced by her one day. Find someone to kill him, it's best to make it look like an accident, and don't make too much of a scene. Luke faintly said as his expression turned cold, this is also a declaration of allegiance. If Alessandro did this, and he was tied to his chariot. If he wanted to rebel or betray, he should carefully consider the consequences. Mussolini's government wouldn't accept a mafia leader who assassinated the local constable. When the mafia was purged, a family shot the governor of Palermo in defiance of the law and caused Sicily's big sensation. As a result, Mussolini was furious he arrested and executed more than 1,000 gangsters on the spot. As long as Alessandro did this, he had no choice but to take refuge in the Allies. I see, I will do it myself and make sure it is done beautifully. Alessandro nodded decisively, he considered himself well versed in assassinations. Which mafia boss didn't climb up slowly from this type of work? For Alessandro, the troubles that killing one person can solve were nothing. Then, I'll excuse myself. Mr. Corleone, if you have anything, you can summon me again. Before Alessandro left, he took off his hat, slightly bowed, and showed a look that all men knew. Malina has always been known as the flower of Sicily, and as the bed companion that countless men dreamt of. When such a beautiful and charming woman is on the bed, even if he were indifferent now, sooner or later, he wouldn't be able to resist. Unless, Mr. Corleone was not interested in women? But in Alessandro's eyes, there was no man in this world that wasn't lustful. At best, there was only the difference between a good man or a bad man. Ah well, what if Mr. Corleone was interested in men? Alessandro began to think, does he need to look for any good-looking men nearby? Unfortunately, he didn't know whether Mr. Corleone liked strong or skinny ones. If Luke knew Alessandro's bizarre thinking, he would put a hole in this guy's head with his fist. By the door of the main bedroom, Draped in a silk nightgown, Malena's eyes looked complicated, as if she was finally relieved. She sat blankly on the bed, somewhat bewildered and overwhelmed. 
Malina had already prepared for the worst when she was sent to Luke's room. Played, violated, and then gradually slipped into the abyss of hell. This was all she could think of, but things didn't go in the worst possible direction. The man, Mr. Corleone, displayed a gentlemanly demeanor rarely seen in the small town folk. Neither his movement nor words were frivolous. Thinking of this, Malina spoke from her heart, Mr. Corleone is a decent man. She was used to the disgusting stares of the men in town, who looked like they wanted to strip her clothes off with their eyes, she couldn't help but be sincerely grateful for Luke's restraint. Malina, who had lost confidence in men, shrank back into the quilt and wrapped herself. She could now finally sleep in peace. Malina, in her hazy sleep, Malina heard someone calling her name. In a trance, she seemed to think of her sick father and her dead husband. Pearls of tears came out and soaked the pillow she was holding as she relaxed, and the pressure which had been weighing her for many days turned into sorrow and heartache for her fate. Suddenly, Malina, who noticed the change in atmosphere around her, suddenly opened her eyes as if awakened. Then, she saw Mr. Corleone sitting by the bed with food on a tray. She didn't notice when she rolled over in her sleep, she wrapped her arms around his waist and her face positioned near his thigh. After such intimate behavior, Malina suddenly bounced away as if she had been electrocuted, bringing her back to reality. Um, I saw that you were asleep quite some time, so I thought you might feel hungry when you get up, so I got some food for us. Luke's expression remained calm, and he didn't look away. He said, you're the one who hugged first, I am indeed a decent man. The next day, early morning. The sky was a subtle gray, as the golden sun slowly leapt out of the horizon to wake up the sleeping Sicily. Luke opened his eyes and got up from the big bed in the second bedroom. He opened the flowy curtains and took a deep breath in the morning sun. He was as if a plant was photosynthesizing, feeling warm light seeping into his cells bit by bit and slowly transforming his body. It's another day full of energy. Luke stretched himself, walking into the bathroom. When he finished washing up, a hearty breakfast was already on the table. I wonder if Koss's mission has been completed? Luke rolled the seafood pasta with a fork and thought so as he ate. On this beautiful island, which is almost isolated from the rest of the world, the administrative officials are divided into a governor, a regional mayor, and a constable at the lowest level. After eliminating Tormina's constable, taking advantage of the blank period of selecting a successor, the mafia could do things conveniently. I wonder what Rogers is doing right now? Is he still performing on stage? After a while, Luke heard a noise in the main bedroom. Malina, who seldom slept well, carefully opened the door. She saw Luke sitting at the table, enjoying his food swiftly and efficiently. She was like a frightened deer, so scared that the head that she poked out hastily retracted. You're awake? I've got a change of clothes for you, come and eat something. Luke smiled and whispered, Malina, you and I stay under the same roof. We would always have to see each other. What's the use of avoiding me? Malina came out silently in her silk nightgown after hearing that. She bent down, picked up the brand new clothes on the sofa, and then returned to the room. Ten minutes later, the main bedroom's door opened. Malina, dressed in a modest dress, sat down at the dining room table. The pasta is cold. Just have the sandwiches and juice. Luke looked up and looked at her. It fits her. He was probably the first person ever to use supervision to guess a woman's three measurements. I told Casa that I would let you go back in a few days, don't get me wrong, Malina. I came to Sicily to do something. I won't stay long. I will leave tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. For the sake of confidentiality, I'll let you stay here for a couple of days. Luke's polite attitude made Malina relax a little. As Alessandro said, she has no job, no income source, and with the wartime food restrictions, she had become the sweet cake that all men in Sicily wanted to eat. If she didn't meet Luke, Malina would one day let go of her inner perseverance, and with her heart full of despair and numbness, she would have fallen. Thank you, Mr. Corleone. Thinking to this point, Malina couldn't help but be grateful to the young man sitting opposite her. She nibbled at the sandwich and watched Luke reading the newspaper. Clean short black hair, deep facial contour, slightly sharp eyes. In Sicily, she believed he could charm many beautiful, passionate, and unrestrained girls. Malina, I have to go out. If you need anything, you can contact the inn staff, and they will get it for you. Luke put the newspaper down and looked at the time. He thought he should go and see Alessandro and the twenty gunmen he recruited. Oh, okay. Mr. Corleone. Malina leaned against the door, 
staring at Luke's leaving back and somehow feeling at ease. Initially, she was ready to become a plaything, but there seemed to be a glimmer of hope in her tragic life. Malina returned to the table with a complicated mood. She inadvertently saw the open newspaper, especially a bold headline that reads. Shocking. The constable's car fell off a cliff. Read what happened. The constable is dead. Malina was in a daze and didn't know what to say. The heaviest piece of stone in her heart disappeared, just like that? Suddenly, it's Mr. Corleone. Malina thought of Don Alessandro, a bully in Sicily and whom no one dared to mess with, but he bowed to the young man and was careful to show his goodwill. Is it really him? Malina, who experienced emotional ups and downs, looked at the clear blue sky and white clouds outside the window. Her heart was like a turbulent sea, and she could no longer calm down. Luke, who has left the inn, didn't know that Malina, who stayed in the room, had lost herself in his thoughts. He took howling commandos with him, left the town first, and walked around the coastline several times. After mapping out the guard positions and defensive forces of the barracks stationed around the area, he returned to the Bronze Bell Tavern. In the backyard, there were dozens of strong young men standing around. These are the best fighters in the family, they all have good and accurate marksmanship and are willing to die for the family. Alessandro didn't take the initiative to mention the constable's accident, which was simply a trivial matter. The mafia had always been good at those kinds of things. The constable, who looked like a fat pig, went to his mistress's house once a week. Alessandro just told his people to secretly do something to his car so that it could be disguised as brake failure. The car skidded, and, unfortunately, fell off the cliff with the person still inside. Anyway, there were no surveillance cameras these days, it is impossible to find clues and find the murderer. They are Kimura family's army, or your army? He asked faintly. Of course, it's mine, but now it's yours, Mr. Corleone. Don Alessandro seemed to have thought of the answer a long time ago. He shouted at the top of his lungs, This is Mr. Vito Corleone. His father is Sicilian. Because of the cruel persecution from Mussolini, the dictator and executioner, he had to leave his homeland and wander around. Now, Mr. Corleone has a successful career. He has returned to his homeland with bread and wine, guns and bullets. Starting from today, we are no longer members of the Camorra family. There is only one person to whom I owe allegiance, and that is Mr. Corleone. Luke quietly watched Alessandro's performance, seeing him say he was Sicilian without even blinking, trying to exaggerate the helplessness and anger of being persecuted and uprooted from his homeland. He could only say that the future generation owes this man an Oscar. Sure enough, acting and lying are skills that any superior must be proficient in. Luke sighed with emotion. Although Alessandro was in front of him, flattering him like a jester and as humble as a bootlicker. But, it was because Luke represented the allies behind him, in addition to the three defeats, he had made this mafia leader bow his head. Because of this, Luke didn't really feel contempt for Alessandro. Even the most docile wolf would eat people when it's hungry. Once you let your guard down, you might get bitten at some point. You are not standing here today to serve me. The name Vito Corleone is just a stranger to you. Luke's eyes swept over the people standing in the backyard some of whom Alessandro had recruited as gunmen, others as mafia hitmen. These young people, who he had never met, might not have any loyalty to him. But they were subservient to the family leader, power, and status. It is a centuries-old tradition of the mafia to be loyal to the family and never betray. Although it's said that the American mafia, which has its roots in North America, is on the verge of forgetting these outdated traditional rules, this is still very useful in Sicily. When Mussolini launched his mafia purge, he arrested thousands of suspects and tortured them. Whipping, pulling off fingernails, or even electrocution, all kinds of brutal torture. Even so, few people dared to betray their families. Even so, in defiance of fascism and Mussolini, according to different factions and families, the mafia has set up assassination teams, with leading members acting as assassins. These men called themselves the Honor Association and targeted senior Nazi officials and officers for assassination. The Mafia was chosen as an informant by the Strategic Science Reserve precisely because of their violent elements, and they weren't afraid of Mussolini's government and could be easily bought. Luke looked around. Surprisingly, he was younger than many of the people in the backyard. However, the intense atmosphere brought by the Superman card formed a pronounced sense of oppression, like a mountain peak pressing down on the hearts of the people. The crowd was silent and no one made any noise, 
Your loyalty towards me is for the honor of the Mafia family, the betterment of your family, and future. Before Mussolini came to power, the police had to grovel to you, and even the constable had to be respectful, but now? They could randomly drag any one of you into prison as a suspect and then hang you at the square to be shot. This dictatorship is trampling on the dignity of every Mafia member and insulting the honor of each one of you. It's time to rise and fight like a real man. Even if you bleed to death, at least you can get the glory and dignity. Luke's voice was calm, passionate, and full of emotion like a speech, not different from what he usually talks. But when it reached the ears of the crowd, it seemed like every word was full of power. They can't help but feel their blood boiling. Even Alessandro, who was standing by, felt the same. The fierce face, full of beard, was full of excitement as if it had recovered its lost youth. Constantine's, expert in deception, is easy to use. I need to exchange a few more in the future, in case of an emergency. Luke had exchanged Constantine's skill card in the shop with the reputation he had saved these couple of days. The demon exorcist, who spent many years professionally backstabbing his team members and was nicknamed, the world's greatest con man, had the devil on his left shoulder and an angle on his right one. From the Justice League, to the supervillains, many people have been conned by him. Be careful when Constantine becomes your team member, it often means the death flag is flying over your head. However, even though he was a con man that could con people, and his skills were first class, in the future, he would simply go and be a top lecturer in a particular school for gifted children. When it comes to stirring up emotions and conning people to death, he was probably only a little worse than the Fuhrer of the Axis powers. Today, I am not asking you to fight for me, the family and honor, but also, for yourself. To overturn the Apennine Peninsula. Let the Mafia and the name of the Corleone family resound through Sicily again. Prove that you are not cowards but brave fighters. Once Luke was finished talking, a chorus of voices erupted from the backyard. This scene was like a lecture on success for the future generations, when successful entrepreneurs and well known rich people carefully boiled their speech after their so called pep talk. The audience sitting below would be so excited that they couldn't wait to start a business. In the backyard, the same was true of the influential and hot blooded mafia members. Everyone was excited as if they would rush into the barracks at the next moment and hang those damn Nazis in the square. We are willing to follow and obey all orders, Don Corleone. A slightly smarter young man stepped out of the crowd and took the lead in shouting. Then, sounds of response came one after another. These, fresh blood, recruits from Alessandro, offered their loyalty one after another. At this moment, Luke had become the godfather of Sicily's mob. On the character panel, the reputation value kept soaring upwards. This skill card is not a bad exchange, Luke is secretly satisfied. The reputation value he had managed to save was all thrown into Constantine's skill card. Now, he didn't only get his capital back, and he also had a slight surplus. Too bad there's only a 24 hour time limit on its use, damn it, system. You're even taking advantage of a Kryptonian. Luke couldn't help but sigh. After making the pre battle preparations, he was ready to leave for Rome. The plan was to divide the troops in two ways he and Dum Dum Duggan will pose as Berlin's secret envoys while the rest of them lurk in through Alessandro's channels. After the two sides meet, they will go straight to Venice Palace. However, before this, they still had a task. Raid a nearby naval camp to create opportunities for Allied troops to land onshore. Give them the food and guns, as for the bullets will be given at the end. Keep an eye on it, and don't cause any trouble. After delivering a provocative speech, Luke left the rest to Alessandro. Also, you contacted Mafia members of other families before, did they answer? I got Don Carlo out of his cell, as you said, he is willing to take refuge in the Allies. Several other families have also agreed that they can be counted on for the raid on the naval camp. Alessandro said as he bowed his head, he hadn't been idle these days. Besides sending Luke women, he also contacted several prominent families in the Mafia. Hearing that Alessandro hooked up with the Allied forces and he also became close to the Strategic Science Reserve, those bosses showed loyalty and wanted to help. They mixed up their identities as anti-dictatorship and freedom fighters, to avoid bad luck after the war. That's good. Luke nodded his head. As a smuggler, all the goods he shipped were guns and bullets. Bread, cigarettes, and red wine were used as a cover-up. At first, Luke didn't tell Alessandro about their plan to raid the naval camp and only told him at the 11th hour. 
because, at this time, the mafia leader had no way to jump ship and could only obediently obey. After repeatedly explaining him some details, Luke returned to the inn where the Howling Commandos members waited with bated breath for the captain's orders. Alessandro is in contact with the chief officer of the camp, he is a senior official of the military supplies department. His mistress happened to be having an affair with a mafia hitman, and then his wife had a relationship with a painter, anyway, it was a very confusing situation. Luke talked about the Navy camp officer being cuckolded, and he couldn't help but give a moment of silence for him. There is no such thing as a quiet period, but someone will carry the burden for you. In short, through this relationship, Alessandro had contacts with him, and the two sides have already talked. When the time comes, I will pretend to be a smuggler and sell some tobacco and wine at a low price in the name of doing business. Casa will also find a group of stripper girls to go over and comfort the Navy soldiers. Luke carefully arranged everything. It would have been idiotic to mess with the German armored divisions stationed in Sicily. But he can raid the Italian naval camp with the strength of the Howling Commandos, it would be no problem. After all, who didn't know that the Italian army is corrupt from top to bottom, also can be said that they were rotten to the core. Senior officers openly colluded with smugglers and let strippers into the barracks? This kind of thing would have been the reasons for court-martial in the Allies. What's more, Luke had a secret weapon. Scarecrows fear gas. First of all, destroy their radio stations and prevent all information from leaking, and then. Luke uttered instructions, and the howling commandos nodded. They had already seen the outstanding ability of the young captain. This time, even if Mussolini isn't captured alive, as long as the return trip was smooth, it would be more than enough. However, crossing the long front, sneaking into Italy, and capturing the naval camp in Sicily. This honor alone was enough to make the Howling Commandos war heroes and be significantly commended by the Allies. Take a break. At 8.10, get ready to move. Luke waved off the team and turned around to see Malina coming out of the bedroom. She was wearing a long black velvet dress with knitted patterns on her neckline and cuffs, elegant and gorgeous. The fabric fits gently on her body, outlining the luscious curves. Mr. Corleone, come back safely. The mature and beautiful woman seemed to understand. Her lips squirmed a few times and whispered. Dark clouds loomed, obscuring the dim stars and the moon. At 8 to 20 p.m., Luke swaggered into the naval camp with the howling commandos in disguise and greeted the soldiers eagerly. Boxes of tobacco, wine, and food were sent to the officers' barracks as if they didn't need the money. There were also enchanting and coquettish stripper girls, wearing exposed clothing, posing on the stage for performance, attracting hooting from men below. Captain David, here's a small token of my appreciation. In the munitions department's meeting room, Luke, wearing a black hat, coat, and suit, sat across the desk. He pulled out a palm sized long gift box with a smile on his face with a glittering pearl necklace inside one could tell it was expensive, based on its color and size. I came in a hurry and didn't bring any gifts, so I'm giving a necklace to the Captain Mrs. Captain David, who had a beer belly, nodded in satisfaction and put away the gift box without a word. In these times of war, the monetary system had already collapsed. Banknotes are no different from waste paper. Only gold and jewelry were hard currency. By the way, for the other, a hem, Captain David can give it to a friend. Luke turned to another gift box, and inside was an even more valuable green agate necklace. Captain David's eyes lit up. This smuggler has done his homework, even knowing that I have a mistress. He didn't notice Luke's pitying eyes at all. The captain didn't know the color of the hat he himself was wearing, just like the green agate necklace. He was genuinely clueless. To tell the truth, Mr. Corleone, I've heard Lieutenant Sirio talk about you. Since you are his friend, you are also my friend. If you want to engage in smuggling, the Navy will give you a warm welcome to ensure your ships are unimpeded. Captain David is also a sincere man, and after receiving the benefits from others, he patted his chest and promised, in the future, I can have Lieutenant Sirio send a battleship to escort any of your smuggling ships. Then, thank you, Captain David, this is just a small gift, the surprise is yet to come. Luke's eyes flickered for a moment as he said meaningfully. However, we also have conditions, as long as Mr. Corleone is willing to let the Navy take half of every cargo, we will certainly work well together. Captain David's eyes were full of greed, he finally made real offer. The Navy can't carry out smuggling openly and earn huge profits, so they wanted to use Mr. Corleone as an ATM. 
Half of the profit from each private shipment could let these senior naval officers eat their fill. Right now, the domestic situation is agitated, and the war is increasingly fierce. The only way to make money was to seize any opportunity. This is what Captain David thought. You know we take a huge risk by covering up smuggling and possibly going to military court. Looking at Captain David's insatiable appearance, Luke still had a smile on his face and didn't seem to be angry at all. He suddenly stood up, raised his hand, looked at the time, and whispered, It's time. Mr. Corleone, what are you talking about? Captain David was bewildered. He didn't know why the smuggler stood up for no reason. Moreover, the overlooking eyes of the other party made him very uncomfortable. It was as if his existence suddenly became small. Sit down, Mr. Corleone, Captain David said in an aggravated and irritated tone. Haven't you noticed yet, Captain? You are no longer qualified to give orders. Luke laughed as he heard the commotion coming from outside. With the fear gas produced by Gotham's scarecrow, taking care of these Italian soldiers couldn't be easier. The howling commandos only needed to wear gas masks before releasing the gas. Before long, the whole camp will be paralyzed. The navy soldiers, gripped by fear, were like lambs to the slaughter, completely defenseless. What's going on? What's going on? What do you want? I'm warning you, don't come over here. Captain David finally realized that something was wrong. The frightened screams outside were now coming into the room. He quickly pulled out the pistol attached to his belt, but before he pulled the trigger, his arm was twisted and broke. The white bone splinter pierced the skin and spurted out a lot of blood. A sharp pain struck, and Captain David fell to his knees, unable to help but cry loudly, trying to alert the guards outside the door. I'm sorry, I didn't control my strength, Luke apologized without sincerity. Looking at Captain David, who kept moving his bloated body backward, there was no fluctuation in his heart. Thanks to the experience he learned from painting houses with Uncle Frank, Luke had no psychological burden from blood nor death. Don't waste your energy. The soldiers in the camp either went to see the strippers or are crying in terror, the guards on duty were also taken care of by us. He faintly said. The entire camp, including the lower marine police quarters, the construction department, the munitions department, the health department, the port authority, and the warehouse, had long since collapsed under Howling Commando's sudden attack on Mafia members. Even patrol boats, minesweepers, and logistics support boats were eliminated by a gang of brazen invading mafia in the name of Captain David's rewards for the soldiers. It isn't only scarecrows fear gas, but drinks laced with something special. Drinking it will incapacitate anyone, even elephants. This incident showed that the Italian army, without any vigilance, was lax enough to be handled by a gang of mafia. Let me go, please, Mr. Corleone. Sir, Captain David begged and even changed his address. Of course, I will let you go. Killing prisoners is inhuman behavior. Luke shrugged his shoulders. He just let go of his strength and made the unfortunate captain scrunch his expression. Don't be so afraid, Captain David, I'm not the devil. Captain David's eyes were full of fear. Luke is no different from the devil in his heart. How can an ordinary person break his arm as if he was breaking chopsticks? Moreover, he also felt that the other party didn't use any effort at all. Stay here and don't try to do stupid things. You can't inform the garrison troops in other camps because we have already destroyed the radio station and also cut the phone lines. Luke took a deep look at Captain David, then walked over and took the pearl necklace back. As for the other green agate necklace? It was a fake prepared by Alessandro. Luke pushed open the door of the meeting room, and heard faint cries of horror outside. The fear gas instantly transformed the Italian naval soldiers into fragile infants. They were dragged into darkness by fear gas, and the most frightening visions appeared in their minds, destroying their will. The screams of fear echoed under the night sky. However, the slight noise that came out swallowed instantly by the sound of waves lapping against the rocks. A group of mafias swarmed in, using axes or pistols, killing all the patrolling guards in sight without mercy. Simple and decisive. It was a silent raid. Luke stood on high, looking down at the bloody flowers blooming in the night, and sketched a satisfied smile around his mouth. By tomorrow, half of Sicily will fall into his hands. When the sun rose the next day, Sicily maintained the rhythm of its everyday life. The slight change were the rumors that Malina climbed onto the bed of a prominent merchant, the constable's accident, and the strippers in the naval camp. This new gossip provided the town residents with many things to talk about at the dinner table. 
As long as the Allied forces didn't launch a large-scale bombing attack, as long as the air defense alarm didn't sound, Tormina was calm. The light of dawn shone over the town along the horizon. Luke jumped off a jeep and went back to the Walcheria Hotel. He stayed up all night, but he was still in high spirits. Let Alessandro's men watch carefully and don't make any trouble. Before entering the door, Luke instructed. The accompanying Dum Dum Duggan nodded to show his understanding. At this juncture, no one should make any mistakes. After a night of raiding and cleaning up, the naval camp was entirely under the Howling Commando's control. From Colonel Bonino to the junior recruits, all were taken as prisoners from the top commander. According to Alessandro's report, after a headcount against the list, there were over 500 officers of all ranks, together with the new recruits and sailors. Some of them inhaled too much fear gas, causing mental disorders and complete incapacitation. Others wanted to resist but were neutralized by the mafia, who stormed into the camp from behind. In a word, only about 420 people survived and became prisoners. The mafia imprisoned all of them in the barracks and warehouses in batches and under their care. Manelli sent a message through the only transmitter preserved in the camp, saying that naval vessels need maintenance and will not participate in patrol and defense affairs for a couple of days. No one would find out that this naval camp had fallen into the Allies' hands during this time. Like the shadow under the lights, no one thought that there was a daring secret team that sneaked into the heart of the Axis, ready to deliver a fatal blow. As for the prisoners in the naval camp, will there be any trouble? Luke didn't worry about it. As long as the Mafia steadily provided Italian Navy soldiers with food, they would be as obedient as domesticated animals. Throughout World War II, Italian troops' strength was there, but they were unwilling to fight, and their will was extremely low. They wanted to run away when they saw other countries' troops, even if they had the advantage in numbers. The most interesting one was when the Italian army met the British army. The former wanted to follow the usual practice and just surrender. As a result, the latter seemed to be tired of this kind of fighting without fighting, not only refusing Italy's surrender but also putting two liaison officers to death. This angered the Italian officers, who called on their soldiers to fight back and beat the confident British army to the ground. It can be said that this battle was Italy's most courageous one. If I were the Fuhrer, I'm afraid I would feel desperate too. What kind of teammates were all these? Luke got rid of his superfluous thoughts and went back to his room. Good morning, Mr. Corleone. The beautiful Malina was sitting at the dinner table, she seemed to have just taken a bath, she pulled her wavy black hair behind her head, and her beige lace silk pajamas couldn't cover up her proud figure. Looking down, those long and straight legs stepped on the carpet, adding a seductive aura. She was indeed the most beautiful woman in Sicily. An ordinary dress alone was enough to make many men crazy about her. Luke calmly looked away and sat down at the table. This is for me. I am a little hungry. When he saw the seafood pasta on the table, he took it without any formalities. Slurp. Slurp. After a storm of slurps, Luke looked up at Malina, who was staring blankly at him, and asked, Is there a problem? I already took a bite. Malina faintly said, She isn't as wary of Luke as before. Instead, she relaxed and stopped being too formal. As for the reasons behind this change, Malina herself couldn't tell. I'm really sorry, I've been busy all night, Luke said with little sincerity. By the way, you can call me Luke. No need to call me Corleone. I've asked Casa to send your father to Palermo, where he can get into Sicily's best hospital for treatment and recuperation. Thank you, Mr. Coral, Luke. Malina, who previously looked sad, had a smile of joy on her face. She was holding a warm glass of milk in her hands, and her voice showed gratitude. Thinking of the accident, that happened to the constable and then the proper arrangements for her father. Malina felt a sense of relief, and the days she spent at the hotel was the most relaxing she had ever had. Not having to worry about men's greedy minds and women's vicious curses. Don't be so polite. By the way, I will probably leave Sicily tomorrow. Casa will take you home then. Luke said as if he was indifferent about it. Don't worry, Malina. No one will bully you in this small town. I already told Casa. The smile that appeared on Malena's face froze for a moment. Yes, I wish you a pleasant journey, the beautiful woman said with great reluctance. Malina didn't say much, she soon got up and went back to her room. Luke's lips rose, looking at the graceful figure leaving in a hurry. He is waiting for the night to come. The afterglow of dusk gradually sank into the sea. 
Malina didn't come out of the bedroom until dinner time. Luke simply packed his bags, he would no longer be Vito Corleone tomorrow but Captain Steiner from Berlin, who won the Iron Cross. The clock on the wall slid into the early hours of the morning, and Luke, who was still awake, heard a noise in the next room. Then carefully pushed the open door and someone is standing at the entrance of the second bedroom. The breathing became even more rapid, and the sound of a heartbeat was prominent. Lying in bed, Luke could almost turn the information she received in his mind into dynamic pictures through super listening. Standing there for so long, aren't you going to come in? Just as Malina flinched and was ready to turn away, the door was opened. Luke, clad in a robe, asked in a teasing tone, If you want to see me off, it seems a bit early. In the dimly lit living room, only the bright moonlight came in from the window. Luke took a step forward, almost sticking to Malina. The latter looked up, her charming body trembling, and a blush appeared on her beautiful face. Like the burning clouds of Sicily in the sunset, I thought you weren't coming. Luke made a move and hooked up Malena's chin with his fingers. What would you have done if I hadn't come? Malena tried to avoid Luke's aggressive gaze but failed. Then, I would have come over. Malena, I'm not the decent Mr. Corleone you imagine. I have a strong possessive nature and like to take what I like for myself. I am more like a villain than the mafia, and I covet your beauty more than the men in town. Luke's fingers traced over Malena's red lips, and his other arm circled to the slender waist and brought it closer with force. M. Malena was surprisingly not offended by Luke's confession, she wanted to say something, but Luke blocked her plump red lips. Outside the window, the darkness of the night was getting deeper and deeper. After a whole night of lovemaking, Luke woke up refreshed the following day. When he got up, he couldn't help but get a strange idea. How did Superman from the studio next door complete the act of biological reproduction with his girlfriend, Lois Lane? For the time being, if he didn't consider the combination between Kryptonian and Earthlings, would there be any problems? Someone that could carry an aircraft weighing hundreds of tons, the firm muscle density that even heavy weapons couldn't penetrate. Such a steel body, won't it break Lois Lane as if she were an inflatable doll? Luke walked into the bathroom with this inexplicable question. To be honest, it was supposed to be a strenuous exercise that made men exert all their efforts and consume their physical strength. For him, who had loaded the Superman card, it was a bit too tricky. Especially controlling his strength was a great test of ability. This is only the LV one-foot civilians, if he unlocked a higher level card, Luke might consider becoming an abstinent superhero without touching the opposite sex. Being overly adequate was really not pleasurable. Luke muttered in a low voice. He just felt like a relentless pile driver throughout the process. Will you come back? Lying on the bed, Malena's face remained somewhat charming. She stared at Luke, who was changing into new clothes and preparing to leave, she asked faintly. Malena didn't know whether what she had done was right or wrong. But there's no doubt that Luke's arrival freed her from her tragic fate and gave her an unprecedented sense of security. It's like a ray of sunshine shining into a gloomy world full of haze. Don't worry, before long, and you will hear my name spread all over Sicily, I should almost be back by then. Luke bowed his head and kissed Malena's smooth forehead. While it's good to be in a gentle home, it was also important to take the first step in his future career. Captain America only defeated Hydra and Red Skull and created an opportunity for the Allies to win the war. He was hailed to the skies by the American military. In the next 70 years, Steve Rogers became a well-known legend, and there were many fans like Coulson. After recovery from the glacier and thawing, he naturally occupied a leading position in both S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Avengers due to his special status. That was the role of reputation, standing on the commanding heights of morality at all times the federal government and superheroes would give him proper respect. Then be careful, I'll wait for you. Malina nodded her head sweetly, like a lazy cat. She didn't think it was a lie, and she didn't know about what great things this man would do to make his name spread all over Sicily. She simply believed that Luke would come back. At 3.40 tomorrow afternoon, Allied troops will land ashore. Luke looked serious, stared at Alessandro, and said, Casa, do this well and you will truly become the most respected person of Sicily, maybe even Italy. The mayor, prime minister, even Mussolini, all these powerful people who once despised you will bow down to you and call you, sir. I will. Captain Cavill, the mafia leader was so excited that his voice trembled. This is the first time he called Luke by his name, 
After all, Vito Corleone was now a thing of the past. Captain Steiner's identity, the Berlin envoy and recipient of the Iron Cross, also wasn't expected to last long. Luke divided his troops in two, as initially planned. He took Dum Dum Duggan, who was accompanying him, and boarded a ship for Rome. Hitler once said that military uniforms must look good, so that young people would join the military without hesitation. Luke had to say that there was some truth in his words. He dressed in a tailored captain's uniform, looked at himself in the mirror. The lapel pins, epaulettes, and wristbands are embellished with the black regalia, and he wore a large brimmed hat with a silver double-headed eagle emblem on his head. There's a woolen center coat on the outside and a pair of calfskin gloves on his hands. This time, Luke, with the profoundly contoured young face, looks like a handsome and sharp Nazi senior military officer. From now on, I am Captain Steiner, the envoy from Berlin. I was born into a military family in Germany and joined the SS. I am Heinrich Luipelwimler's confidant. The purpose of this trip to Rome is to deliver the orders from the Führer. Luke repeated his identity to Dum Dum Duggan. Got it. The latter noted silently. They are about to infiltrate into the enemy's territory and capture their leader alive. There's no room for sloppiness with details.